It is indeed. Uh, tell us about the Islamic pr perspective. Uh, what is the point of view of the radical Islamics? There are those who are saying that we must engage our terrorist enemies, that we must address their grievances. What is their grievance against America, and what is their grievance against Israel? Their grievance is our democratic process. Their grievance is our existence. Their grievance is our freedoms and all the freedoms that we cherish. Their grievance is how a man respects his wife, is how a father loves and honors his daughter. Their freedom, their, their grievance is our education, the way we love life, the way we pursue life, the way we pursue wealth, the way we relate to each other as one another, the way we look at each other as equal under the law and in the eyes of God. Because in the eyes of radical Islamists and in the eyes of Muslims, according to their Quran, there is no equal to Islam. Islam is above Christianity, is above Judaism. While we as Christian and Jews learn about tolerance and forgiveness and love. Now in this part we just seen, she talks about how, what are the reasons for the dislike of America, Israel, the West, etc. Of course, she comes up with this nonsense and BS claim that it's just because they exist. They've done nothing wrong. They're innocent. They're angels. They look like Jesus Christ. They follow Jesus Christ. They're taught love and they're taught tolerance and equality uh, by law and, and by under God. All a bunch of nonsense. Okay? Really, Bridgie? Really? Law, uh, equal under the law, equal under God? Okay, let's take a look at everybody. Here, I'm going to show you some articles proving that she doesn't know what she's talking about. But then again, that's what happens. You got a lot of foreigners who come here. As I said earlier, they want to garner favor with those in power, which is the white power structure. And they talk of this BS that doesn't really exist, that is not true to the facts. Here we see articles here. Take a look. And it's a wonderful quality to have. Those are wonderful characters of the West. Our enemy despises, and this is why they want to destroy us. And, and when I look around me, and, and after I wake up on September 11th, and I watch television, and Americans were asking questions, why do they hate us? What did we do to them? America didn't have to do anything. Israel didn't have to do anything. They simply exist. And now let's deal with this, uh, the reasons and the motivation. She claims, of course, that it's religious, that they're just motivated by the teachings of Islam. And notice how she connects the two. She says it's the radicals and the, other, and the regular Muslims. Like I told you, brothers and sisters, they are trying to demonize us all. See, they're not just talking about the radicals. They are talking about all Muslims, as she, as she did right here. Because in the eyes of radical Islamists and in the eyes of Muslims, according to their Quran, there is no equal to Islam. Because in the eyes of radical Islamists and in the eyes of Muslims, according to their Quran, she said the radicals believe this and the Muslims believe it because their Quran teaches so and so. That's their tactic. They're double talking here. You got to pay attention to catch it. They say, oh, we're only talking about the radicals, but then they go right, right around and then pass it through that they're actually talking about all the Muslims. This is their game. This is their tactic. you got to listen carefully and catch it. And even those people who are sincere people who are not Muslim, but you are against bigotry in all its forms, you should pay attention to how they do that. And perhaps you have noticed that already. Okay? But here, let us see what our government, what our government here in the United States found out was the reason and the motivation for the for, for their hatred of us was it is it religious 
Is it because they read the Quran? Is it because of something that Islam teaches? Here, I'll let the 9-11 investigation commission, the 9-11 commission and the investigators from the commission, here's what they said are the reasons for the hatred and dislike of America and the West. Here, listen to them. Here. I'm interested in the question of motivation of these hijackers. Uh, and I, my question is really directed to the agents. But what have you found out about why these men did what they did? What motivated them to do it? I, I believe they feel a sense of outrage against the United States. They identify <laughs> Uh, with uh, the Palestinian problem. They identify uh, with people who oppose repressive re uh, re regimes. And I believe they tend to focus their anger on the United States. They identify uh, with uh, the Palestinian problem. They identify uh, with people who oppose repressive uh, re regimes. And I believe they tend to focus their anger on the United States. Mr. Hamilton, I had a quick question for you, sir. I'd spoken with you on C-SPAN about a month ago, and we talked. I think we'd, uh, yeah, we talked about Israeli we, we, policy. We would like, we'd like to. Yeah, but why our, are we addressing like the grill in the our, room? The grill in the room is U.S. support for Israel. You, you had made a mistake earlier. Yeah, yeah. You had said that the Israeli-Palestinian dispute wasn't addressed in the 9/11 Commission report. I beg yeah. to differ with that. On page 147, it is stated that well, the plotter of 9/11, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was driven to attack us, not because of radical ideology, as, as okay. um, by uh, Mr. Blair, because of U.S. support for Israel. Why are we addressing that, sir? All right. So that's clear. But let's not stop there. Let's not stop there. Let's listen to a uh, presidential candidate for the Republican Party, Ron Paul. Very smart man. Very intelligent man. Very, very honest uh, about the, the, the America's foreign policy. Here's what he says are the facts about why the people in the Middle East don't like America or the West. Here, listen. Non-intervention was a major contributing factor. Have you ever read about the reasons they attacked us? They, they attack us because we've been over there. We've been bombing Iraq for 10 years. We've been in the Middle East. I think Reagan was right. We don't understand the irrationality of Middle Eastern politics. So right now we're building an embassy in Iraq that's bigger than the Vatican. We're building 14 permanent bases. What would we say here if China was doing this in our country or in the Gulf of Mexico? We would be objecting. We need to look at what we do from the perspective of what would happen if somebody else did it to us. I believe very sincerely that the, that the CIA is correct when they teach and, and talk about blowback. When we went into uh, Iran in 1953 and installed the Shah, yes, there was blowback. Uh, the reaction to that was the taking of our hostages, and that persists. And if we ignore that, we ignore that at our own risk. That if we think that we can do what we want around the world and not incite hatred, then we then we have a problem. They don't come here to attack us because we're rich and we're free. They come and they, and they attack us because we're over there. I mean, what would we think if we were uh, if other foreign countries were doing that to us?